I must say you've caught me in a right pickle. My husband and I are just about to move house. We live in the heart of London at the moment, in Cheapside. Our house is just a stone's throw from St Paul's. But I'm afraid it's become increasingly difficult to live here. What with the sheer filth in the streets and the overwhelming number of people. Oh, I do apologise. Where are my manners? My name is Bess. I've been telling my husband we should have moved years ago, but would he listen? No. But finally, he has begun to see sense. Even he realises that there are just too many people living here in Cheapside. And with overcrowding comes disease. And of course, the plague. I blame it on the growing population. Times have been good these past few years, with good harvests and trade. We are expanding as a nation. We are exporting as well as importing goods from all over the world. I have the most beautiful rug from Persia, wherever that is. So it's hardly surprising that families have prospered and more babes have been born, which is all very good in fine times. But when you think about the bad harvests we have had of late and the steady increase in food prices, it isn't any wonder that the poor are on the increase. And there are more vagabonds on the streets. They are men turned out of their farm cottages due to the failure of the crops. It is simple. There is no work, therefore no home to live in, and they take to the life of a vagabond. And when you think of the collapse of the cloth trade, putting more people out of work, my goodness, how is such a man affected by high prices and no employment expected to support his family? Now, we who are better off do our duty as good Christians. We help those that are in need. Like the beggar who is injured and unable to work, the orphan or returning wounded soldiers. These poor souls all need our help and these are the genuine poor. You may read in our parish register that every week I give what is expected for the relief of our own parish poor. After all, they have always been with us. But it used to be the monasteries that looked after the poor. But good King Henry closed them down. So now, as I said, the burden lies with us, the better off, to have a duty to care and provide for our own parish poor. Those within our church boundaries are not the problem. The problem I have is that many of these so-called beggars are not even from London. Well, they haven't even got a license to beg. Oh yes, you must have a license to beg. But many of these so-called beggars are just vagabonds. They are vagrants wandering from parish to parish, and not just in London, but all over the land. And with these vagabonds always comes crime, thievery, cut purses and assaults. These are commonplace in London now. And I know that this street crime is being committed by these hated vagrants. <laughs> many of them profess to be ill or unable to work. But they're all lying, well you could tell by just looking at them. They're idle drunkards who consume all and then riot and beg. In my opinion, all unlicensed beggars and vagabonds should be dealt with harshly, sent back to their own parishes so as not to be a burden on others. Mind you, for what it's worth, there are poor laws, supposedly introduced for the punishment of vagabonds and for the relief of the poor and helpless. The Justice of the Peace registers all poor, aged and helpless people within their district, rehomes them at the cost of other residents. Even if you have lived in the district for more than three years, you may register for assistance. But despite this law, the system just isn't working. There is also an act for setting the poor to work and for the avoidance of idleness, but this too is failing. The able-bodied are given wool to spin, so they may earn money. But some of them are just too lazy, and if they fail to produce the spun yarn, they're supposedly sent to the new house of correction. A good whipping might do them more good. 
But there are those who just do not have the basic skill to spin the wool, so what are they supposed to do, I ask you? The fathers of illegitimate children are supposed to be tracked down, but no one bothers. So you see how concerned I am about the situation. Every time I go out, I'm confronted by beggars and idle people. They lie about in pallets of straw, even in the filth and gutter of the streets, always ready to attempt any mischief. The streets swarm with them, that no man can stand or stay in any street or church, but ten or twelve beggars come breathing in his face. They even have plague sores and other contagious diseases running down their face. What is the cause that so many children, boys and girls, do loiter in the streets of London? They even loiter in St Paul's and lie in the stalls all night. I have no answer to this. Oh, but I must be away now, for I have to make ready for the theatre this evening. We have to get there early to avoid the rush and get a seat. Do you know, it is a penny to go in, another penny to go upstairs, and if you want a seat with a cushion, it is yet another penny. And all the men take up most of the room because then they have this very large trunk hose. So us ladies have to squeeze in. Nonetheless, it is a goodly way to spend an evening watching bawdy players at the New Globe. Oh, I think I might have a bite of pie before I go.